Hi, my name is Anthony. Uh, I'm going to give a little presentation on user scripts and the tools uh, to create them. All this information in this video will be available on 7 allcom Just search for this title and let's get started. So, first thing I want to do is kind of give a high level overview of user scripts and show some examples of that I use and that I've created and then go through an example of a recent one that I created and how did I create it and then talk about some of the resources that I used uh, to create these scripts. So I'll be talking about Notepad, Notepad Plus, uh, which has JS Lint and JS Minimize built into it, uh, JS Fiddle, Firebug, Selector Gadget, Stack Overflow, and then obviously userscripts.org. So some examples that I, that I uh, wanted to highlight, this is one of my favorites that somebody created uh, that you can actually search for, Craigslist Image Preview on userscripts.org and, and install this yourself. But essentially it, it does exactly what a user script is to me, which makes a website better. Uh, in this particular case, I think everybody searched on Craigslist and you get these giant listings um, and it's very hard to sort through them quickly. Well, what, what this script does is it goes to each link, grabs the HTML, parses out the images, and then appends those images to uh, underneath the listing there so you can actually see a picture of what somebody has posted. Very useful. Uh, because I sell a lot of stuff on Craigslist, I created this one to filter out uh, my postings. Uh, when you when you log into your account, you'll see everything um, based on a date range that's active and removed and expired and flagged, and it makes it very hard to quickly see what uh, what's left or what needs to be relisted. So, created a, a little script using jQuery toggle, which allows me to click on active or removed or expired or flagged, and it turns them off or on. So, uh, very useful tool. Same with Autoblog. Um, you know they have beautiful imagery but you've got to go through their gallery tool and it's it's rather painful especially in this example where there's there's a, about a hundred images um, so what I did is I looked at each image found the high-res image and then appended it to the bottom of the page so what you see here on the right is an actual example of where it went out grabbed all the high-res images and pinned them to the page so now all I have to do is scroll similar to eBay uh, this is one that I wrote uh, or similar to Craigslist, one that I wrote for eBay, which goes out, grabs the images from the link for each listing, and then replaces the thumbnail with a larger image, so it makes it a little easier to see uh, what you're what you're searching for. So let's walk through a specific example of, you know, how can you make a website better? In this particular case, this is a table that. Um, has a lot of information hidden in the titles that I wanted to extract and, and actually use in the table. So what I do is I, I look at the image and each image has a title associated with it which happens to be the location and then I wanted to append that to the row uh, so that I didn't have to mouse over the image to find out the title. And then I also wanted to highlight uh, the any numbers that were greater than 10 seconds. And so here's my result. You can see I've just got a little border around um, one of the one of the rows that is greater than 10 seconds or one of the cells. And then I've <clears throat> added the title to the end of the page. So how did I do that? Well, obviously I had I had to look at the code for the page and figure out, you know, what is going to be my strategy. And in this particular case, when you look at the image in uh, Firebug, you can see that there is a title for that image and then you can see the unique URL associated with that. Um, so what I did was, <clears throat> as I was going through the table looking for some commonalities that I could search on, I discovered that, you know, it looks like the word flags is in every single uh, image associated with, with this uh, column. So uh, by using Firebug, you can navigate through, inspect the elements using this inspection tab, inspect the different areas, and find out what's behind the code. And then let's actually run over to an example that uh, shows that particular table. So if I demo with this inspection tool live, you can see I can mouse over areas and it selects them. And so specifically, if I click on that image, it highlights uh, the code associated with that image and you can see that it's in a, a tag with an image tag uh, under this TD. <clears throat> and so if you collapse all of the TDs for this particular row, you can start to see how it's organized and you can see that I've got an actually a couple of empty uh, areas over here that I want to fill up with data. So back to the presentation, I, you know, I, I use Notepad uh, 
for JavaScript and I use them for, for some of my JavaScript, but mainly for, for managing large data sets and cleaning up data uh, to put into Excel or, or programs. Uh, however, Notepad has some very powerful tools associated with JavaScript that are built in as plugins. And so for that example that I just showed where I have this table, I ended up with this code and, and this is what it looks like in uh, Notepad. So you can see that I'm using jQuery, I'm finding this table uh, this row and this image tag, assigning it to this variable, and then I've got a little counter here. Um, and, and this is rather sloppy. Uh, that's why in my final work you'll see how I use jQuery to pretty much do all this. But uh, what I had to do is I had to loop through every single uh, image tag, look for this pattern which was flag, um, and then if that flag match the if, if that URL match the word flag then what I would do is change the inner HTML to the actual title uh, of this location so as you can see this is a little cumbersome uh, I wanted to find a better way to do it and so I actually posted a question on um, Stack Overflow which because I'm new to jQuery and I'm new to JavaScript, um, you know, I can usually hack my way through it and make it work. However, I know there's a better way to do it, and, and this is what I came up with. So um, in, for this entire user script, you see that you have a header here that defines what this user script is. Uh, for Chrome, you have to use the match include, uh, which is a little different. There's different ways to get them loaded into Chrome than, than Firefox, but I found that it, it pretty much works either way. Because I'm using JavaScript, what I do is I build a um, an actual element, a script element, and append it to the body of the document and import in JavaScript from Google. Somebody had actually created this on uh, userscripts.org, and it's, it's a, it works very well. So here's my main function, and let's go over to Notepad and walk through uh, this particular example. So one thing that's really nice about Notepad is you can collapse your functions and hide. So like I've just hidden all this jQuery stuff that you don't really need to worry about. Uh, the, you know, the meat of the code is right here, which is look for this user um, class, change the width of the table, and then let's find this class, which is um, table, row, image, and then search for in the SRC for the word flag. And then for each of those, run the rest of this code. So what it does is it takes the image, uh, takes this code, looks for the closest TD, and then it looks for the last TD, and then goes to the previous TD and appends the title. So these are some methods that are available in JavaScript that are really slick that allow you to navigate through the DOM of, of a website. Uh, however, because there's some other images besides those flags that are uh, available that I'll show here in a second, for other information on the site, I had to uh, determine. I actually found out that this flag word is used in another uh, another reference, so I had to change this to I think in the URL it was media uh, slash flag, and that eliminated some errors that I that I was getting. But um, the next thing that I wanted to do was apply a border to anything over 10 seconds. So using this exact same thing, this exact same. Um, methodology I took this start use this as a starting point said you know minutes on site I found minutes on site by navigating over with these methods in jQuery which is closest next all previous previous H grab the HTML uh, so essentially this variable becomes the HTML for that second second then I compare it to the amount of time and if it's greater than 10 seconds then once again I use this as my starting point say find the closest TD scoot over three times with this next statement and then apply a border to it. There are some other ways to do this or you can navigate around differently. This is just a quick and easy and dirty way to do it. But the cool thing is because it has JS Lint built into it, you can check your code. So if you have any bizarre errors or any typing errors, uh, like I just you know added a, another uh, semicolon there, it's set it expected, um, unexpected semicolon. Similarly, if I, if I put a semicolon in here, it's gonna give me an error. Um, and it's you know all of a sudden it's bringing up a bunch of stuff the nice thing is you can get right to the rows of where those errors are um, it makes it very easy to decode uh, another nice thing is JS minify minify which or minimize which um, allows you to basically get rid of everything that you don't need but I use it for JS format which is really nice it comes in and, and cleans up the formatting of the 
uh, file so you can see how everything lines up. So back to um, this example using this table, once you have a strategy of how you want to do this, you need to come up with a way to test it. You can do it through Firebug Console. Uh, it's a little painful to in inject uh, jQuery into the page and, and use the console. It's, it's, I, I do it. However, JS Fiddle is this tool that's very slick. Uh, I have actually embedded this example into the site, uh, but it allows you to put the HTML in, the CSS, and then your JavaScript. So we can go over to uh, that specific example. And what's really cool is you can test out all kinds of things. So here I've actually said next all instead of next, and it selects all the elements after this uh, closest TD. So if I come in and say uh, run next and then run it, it'll actually give me an updated uh, piece of the code here. Let's see what's going on. So now you can see it actually just selected this one instead of all. So I can actually come back in and add another next run it again and see how that affects uh, the results and it should select yes you know, so the, the next image icon and these were the image icons that I had a problem with where I was just using flag this one actually has um, the word flag in it so if I come in here and say inspect element you'll see that it has the word flag in the name of it so that's where I had to add that media slash flag so very powerful tool um, recommend you take a look on the site play around with this specific example Obviously, there's a lot of questions that I have as I go through, and usually I can find the answers already on uh, Stack Overflow. has some very powerful tagging and searching functionality. And then for this specific example of where I had really sloppy code, I put it on there and said, hey, how can I do this better? And uh, somebody showed me how to do it in, in jQuery, which was really cool. Uh, because I'm learning jQuery, I want to know how to do it the most efficient way. So in summary, you know, you really have to get the right tools. Notepad Plus is great for JavaScript. Uh, Firebug is a must. And then obviously you have to install Grease Monkey for Firefox. And then Chrome already allows, uh, it's already built into Chrome to where you can you can install user scripts. There's just a little few nuances where you have to add the, uh, the match instead of the include statement for uh, the URL that it's going to work on. But at the end of the day, once you, once you get the tools, you have to strategize how are you going to do what you want to do and really it comes down to inspecting the site figuring out what information you have to extract and extract and then how are you going to code it to put it where you want it or reuse it the way that you need to uh, probably the easiest way to do that is to set up a js fiddle and test strategies and then refine your code uh, you can add user scripts to your header and and then install once once it's working um, this morning i created a user script to automatically check into a southwest flight um, so there's, you know, all kinds of possibilities. Uh, if you like this video, you know, leave some comments, hit the like button on YouTube, and I can try to create more detailed specific examples, but this is a very high level overview. Thank you.